Hi, everybody. Well, I guess it's time to start. I hope you're doing okay wherever you are. Uh, last time, last time we were talking about uh, hemiacetal formation, and today I'd like to talk about uh, another reaction, which will be the formation of acetals. Acetal formation. Okay. The recipe for the acetal is an aldehyde or a ketone. This is an aldehyde or a ketone, uh, and two equivalents of alcohol. So uh, two equivalents of alcohol. The reaction is reversible, but it occurs only under acidic conditions, only H plus. So this is kind of different from what we were talking about uh, in hydrate formation and in uh, hemiacetal formation, in that both of those reactions, hydrate formation and hemiacetal formation, could occur under both acidic and basic conditions. But acetals form only in acid, and we'll explain why that is in a minute. OK, so this, I'm going to put a little dot on what starts out as the carbonyl carbon. And the product here is an acetal. So there's the dot. That's the carbon atom that used to be the carbonyl carbon. And now the, uh, this uh, carbon atom now has added two equivalents of OR group. So these are the, the, two, uh, the, the two equivalents of alcohol. They end up bonded to this carbon atom that used to be the carbonyl carbon. The other product of this reaction is water. So that's the recipe for the acetal. It's an aldehyde or ketone plus two equivalents of alcohol plus acidic conditions. The product is an acetal and water. Okay, so we're going to get into the mechanism, but how about let's just do some uh, product prediction, because this is one of the skills that I want you to be able to, uh, to master as you, uh, uh, as we study these reactions, to be given the starting materials and be able to come up with the, uh, uh, the product. Okay, so let's start with something uh, uh, fairly easy. So what about something like uh, this? And we add to that two equivalents of methanol. The reaction is reversible. It's acidic conditions. So use this as a model and draw the structure of the product acetal. It's the recipe for an acetal. It's an aldehyde or a ketone plus uh, two equivalents of alcohol. So draw the structure of the product. So I'll give you a little bit of time. Try that on your own. Okay, the uh, carbonyl carbon, it starts out as the carbonyl carbon, ends up the acetal carbon. So there it is. And the, the uh, two equivalents of alcohol add to that carbon atom that used to be the carbonyl carbon but this H is gone. So over here, I would put OCH3, another OCH3 over there, and the product here is, is water. Okay, so that's a uh, kind of an entry-level acetal formation uh, product prediction. Let's just do another. Uh, maybe this time we can start with uh, aldehyde and let's add a little bit fancier alcohol here maybe something like two equivalents of isopropyl alcohol acidic conditions draw the structure of the product okay so why don't you try that Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so the carbonyl carbon is converted to an acetal carbon and two equivalents, the two equivalents of the alcohol add to what used to be the carbonyl carbon. And once again, it's uh, going to be uh, uh, the, the two uh, alcohol molecules lose that extra proton and the other product of this reaction is water. Okay, so I'm gonna, maybe this is a little bit too high, try this way. Something like that. Okay, so now let's talk about mechanism of the reaction. So this is your third your third big mechanism problem, uh, mechanism uh, that we had. First we had hydrates and then we had uh, hemiacetals and now let's look at the acetal mechanism. Okay, so we uh, start out with our aldehyde or a ketone, which I'm just going to abbreviate this way. And we have acidic conditions. And so one of the things that we've said numerous times is that whenever we have a uh, carbonyl compound sitting around in acid, the first thing that happens mechanistically is protonation of the carbonyl oxygen. And then that is followed immediately by attack on the carbonyl carbon by the nucleophile. So the first step in the acetal mechanism is going to be protonation of the carbonyl oxygen. So this carbonyl oxygen has electron pairs on it. And this is what it uses to grab a proton from the solution. And we end up with this guy, right? That's the protonated uh, carbonyl. Now, uh, you don't have to do, you don't have to write its resonance structure. This is optional. But maybe this uh, makes understanding the rest of the mechanism uh, a little bit more understandable, where that oxygen atom is very electronegative. And so I'm drawing that arrow showing that the oxygen, positively charged oxygen uh, is gobbling up uh, one of the bonds of that double bond system. OK, now it's time to attack the carbonyl carbon by the, with the nucleus. And the nucleophile is our first equivalent of alcohol. Because remember, we have two equivalents of alcohol. The uh, next step is uh, the uh, attack of the carbonyl carbon by the nucleophile. OK, and so we have. this intermediate. And now that oxygen atom undergoes a, uh, this oxygen atom here, this positively charged oxygen, he's very electronegative. He doesn't like to have a positive charge. So he wants to get rid of that positive charge. And he does that by undergoing deprotonation. So a something in the solution, some base in the solution, and it could be another molecule of alcohol or it could be this carbonyl oxygen, something. Uh, we have a lot of candidates for what removes this proton. And instead of identifying what, what that base is, we just write this arrow. It kind of looks like that proton is just falling off, but that's not really what it's doing. What it's really doing is a base is coming along and removing that proton. So uh, our next step would be deprotonation of that uh, oxygen atom. All right, so now we're here. OK. And we haven't written anything new yet, because all we've written so far is the mechanism for the hemiacetal formation. Right. So, when, uh, so um, when we start out with, uh, when we're writing the mechanism for the acid, uh, how an acetal forms, the first thing that happens are all of the steps that lead to the hemiacetal. 
What's a heavy acid tau? It has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens, and one of those oxygens is an OH oxygen, and the other one is not. Okay, so we haven't said anything new. The first steps in this mechanism are just the formation of the hemi acid tau. Okay, now let's, now the next, this is going to be new because this is what, uh, uh, the, uh, the, this is going to lead to the, uh, the acid tau. Okay, next step is protonation of this OH oxygen because remember one of our products when we're forming an acetal, one of our products is water. So that our mechanism has to explain how water is produced. So this oxygen atom uh, uses its unshared electron pairs to grab a proton from the solution. And so that leads to the production of this intermediate where once again, we have a positively charged oxygen. Oxygen doesn't like to have a positive charge because it's electronegative. And so every time we see a positively charged oxygen, something's going to happen to try to uh, uh, remove that positive charge and bring the oxygen back to being neutral. And so what happens now is expulsion of water. So this arrow means that this oxygen atom eats up the electron pair that is making this bond. And so this explains the formation of uh, water. So that oxygen atom parts as a molecule of water. And what is left behind is this carbocation, which has this positive charge on this carbon. All right, so uh, now that's the electrophile it is going to undergo attack by a nucleophile. And the nucleophile at this stage is going to be our second equivalent of alcohol. So this comes in, so alcohol comes in, second equivalent of alcohol comes in. You need a bigger arrow. Second equivalent of alcohol comes in. And it does exactly the same thing that it did over here in an earlier step of the mechanism, right? The, uh, uh, the uh, oxygen attacks that positively charged carbon. That's the nucleophile. It's electron rich. That's the electrophile. It's electron poor. And so the second equivalent of oxygen, uh, second equivalent of alcohol attacks the, uh, that uh, carbon. And so we get a species, we get an intermediate that looks like this. And once again, there's a, uh, uh, an oxygen atom with a positive charge. Oxygen, as we've said many times already, doesn't like to have this positive charge. So what it's going to do is do something to get rid of that positive charge. And so this undergoes a deprotonation of base in the solution comes along and removes the removes that proton, and what we're left with is our final product, which is the acetal. So a proton flew off here, a proton went away, and what we're left with here is the acetal. Okay, so that's the that's the mechanism for the formation of an acetal. So just to summarize. It goes through a, uh, it goes first through the heavy acetal and then it goes on to the full acetal. Okay, so now I'm going to get into something else, but before I do, I'm wondering are there any questions about anything? Any questions about anything? No? Okay. So if you hear me sneeze, it's probably not that I have coronavirus. It's just that I'm trying to use this chalkboard. And when I'm erasing, there's a lot of chalk dust. And that's kind of irritating. So I may sneeze. Relax. OK. 
Now, one of the things that we have to talk about now is the diversity of acetal formation. The recipe for the acetal is an aldehyde or ketone, two equivalents of uh, alcohol uh, and acid conditions. That's the recipe for forming the acetal. But it turns out that we can, we have a lot of options and a lot of possibilities when it comes to acetal formation. So this, we could call this the diversity of acetal formation. Okay, remember the recipe is now the hydroketone and two equivalents of alcohol. So we, uh, so one, our first option is the option we just entertained, which is we have an aldehyde or a ketone and two equivalents of alcohol. The reaction is reversible and we have acidic conditions. The product here is going to be the acetal where what used to be the carbonyl carbon is converted to the acetal carbon. Okay, so that's case number one. That's the only case we've under, uh, undertaken up to now. But we have another possibility in which we fulfill the requirements of the acetal, which is simply an aldehyde or ketone and two equivalents of, of alcohol. All right, so, uh, something that something that could happen could be that the beginning aldehyde or ketone has an OH group in that very same molecule. And that OH group is far enough away from the carbonyl carbon that a five-membered ring or a six-membered ring can form. So, for example, if we have... If there's, there's our first OH group, and there's our ketone. And now let's pitch into this a, 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 a second equivalent of OH group, maybe another molecule of methanol. Okay, this and then uh, acid conditions. So this set of circumstances this also fulfills the requirement for an acetal. It's an aldehyde or ketone and two OH groups. The difference between case two and case one is that the two OH groups were on two separate molecules. Here, one of, one of the OH groups is on our starting aldehyde or ketone, and it's far enough away that it's going, when I hook up this, alcohol, this oxygen to this carbonyl, I'm going to get a one, two, three, four, five-membered ring. And remember we said last time that formation of five-membered rings and six-membered rings, these are, this is favorable because five-membered rings and six-membered rings are thermodynamically stable. Now, so uh, what, what is going to happen here first is, the, is that this oxygen is going to attack this carbonyl. So we have intramolecular reactions and intermolecular reactions. Intramolecular means that the nucleophile and the electrophile are all in the same molecule. Intermolecular means that the nucleophile and the electrophile are on two different molecules. Intramolecular molecular reactions where the nucleophile and the electrophile are in the same molecule are faster than intermolecular reactions because uh, this carbonyl carbon doesn't have to swim around in the solution looking for an alcohol to react with because the uh, carbonyl is right here the carbonyl is where am I? the carbonyl is right here the alcohol is right here they don't have to swim around in solution, they just ring it up. So what's going to happen first here is the formation of that five-membered ring cyclic hemiacetal that is produced by inter, by intramolecular reaction. 
So I'm hooking up this oxygen to this carbonyl, making a five-member ring, cyclic heavy acetal. Doesn't matter where I write the OH or the methyl group, but I'll just write it down here just to try to keep things consistent. And this molecule of methanol hasn't done anything yet because this, this uh, hemiacetal here forms by the intramolecular reaction. And that's faster than an intermolecular reaction. Okay, we still have acid around because acid is the catalyst. And now what's going to happen is that the, there's the hemiacetal. When we looked, when we drew the mechanism for acetal formation, we saw that a hemiacetal is formed first and that the hemiacetal goes on to form the full acetal. And so what will happen here and our final product will be an acetal. What's an acetal? It has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens, and neither of those oxygens are OH oxygens. So there's our acid, there's our acetal. Okay, and now this reaction could also happen when a six-member ring can form. So that's going to look something like uh, Let's see, let me get my cheat sheet here. Where's my cheat sheet? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my carbonyl group. And once again, I see that the, what I'm going to hook up this OH, this OH oxygen to this carbonyl, and that's going to form a six member ring. That's uh, thermodynamically favorable. Let's pitch in an alcohol here, maybe uh, ethanol. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get that six member ring cyclic hemiacetal formed by an intramolecular reaction. That's much faster than the intermolecular reaction. And then this goes on to form the full acetal. So the product here would be, there's our six member ring, right? This oxygen right here, I'm gonna put him in bold face. That oxygen right there is this one, this carbon, that starts life as the carbonyl carbon. Now it's over here. Uh, but this is the recipe for the acetal. Two OH groups and now the hydroketone plus acid. And so the product here is going to be that, right? That's the acetal. What's an acetal? It has that, uh, uh, oh, there's also a methyl group here. And it's the, uh, it has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygen atoms, and neither of those oxygens are OH oxygens. Okay, so this is the second uh, situation that could occur, is that the, the aldehyde or the ketone starts life in a molecule that has an OH group in it already. It's going to ring up, if it can, to form a four-member ring or a five-member ring and then uh, a four member, uh, sorry, a five member ring or six member ring cyclic hemiacetal. And then that cyclic hemiacetal goes on to form the full acetal. But we're not done yet because there's another case. There's a case number three, continuing the diversity, continuing to talk about the diversity of acetal formation. Okay, case number three would be, again, the recipe for the hemiacetal is an aldehyde or ketone plus an, uh, two OH groups. But what if the starting aldehyde or ketone has two OH groups already in the molecule in which it lives? So that could be something like this.
Okay, so this is also going to lead to the formation of an acetal, where the uh, we have an we have a ketone here, and we have two OH groups. But in this case, it's just one molecule that's reacting. Look at case one. Case one, we had three molecules reacting: the aldehyde or the ketone, and then two alcohol molecules. Here, we just whittled it down to one molecule is undergoing reaction because this guy has the aldehyde or ketone functionality and the two OH groups that are required all in the same molecule. And when I hook up, I'm going to hook up this oxygen. I'm going to put him in whole phase. I'm going to hook him up to that carbonyl carbon. And I see I can make a one, two, three, four, five membered ring. And so this makes the five membered ring cyclic hemiacetal. Right? And the other OH group hasn't done anything yet. Now it goes on by the steps of the mechanism that we outlined earlier. This is going to go on to make a, uh, there's my bold face oxygen. This is going to go on to make the acetal, which is going to have a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens and neither of those oxygens are OH oxygen. So we get as the final product, we get a very cute, in my opinion, anyone here besides me think that an organic molecule can be cute? Oh, to me, this looks very cute, right? There's the, there's the acetal that, that would be formed. And so this guy uh, was produced when this OH group was protonated, it left as water, and then the second uh, OH group came in to form the acetal. And again, we can recognize an acetal because an acetal has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens, and neither of those oxygens are OH oxygens. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the diversity of acetal formation. So to make an acetal, we can either, it can be the reaction of three molecules or the reaction of two molecules or the reaction of one molecule. But very important to keep in mind that these uh, reactions are, are going to happen when five membered rings or six membered rings can be formed. Okay, so that's a lot to digest. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, complicated, I guess. So let's just work some problems and some examples. Okay, so problem. So there's our aldehyde or ketone, and I'm going to react it with this guy here which is glycerol. Maybe you've heard of glycerol. This is a very common uh, ingredient in personal care products, such as hand lotion and uh, soap, so on and so forth. Acid conditions draw the structure of the product. And I'll give you a big hint here. There are two acetal, two different acetal products. Draw both of them. What's the recipe for an acetal? The aldehyde or ketone and two OH groups. But we just saw that those two OH groups can be on two, on two different molecules or on one molecule or on, on three molecules, two molecules, or one molecule. Okay, so draw the structure of the product. So I'll give you a, a couple, I'll give you a minute or so to see if you can come up with something on your own. How are we coming along out there? Anyone trying the problem? You have two different acetals are formed here. Draw their structures. Okay. Oh.
So what I see here is there's my aldehyde or ketone. There's my carbonyl carbon. I'm going to put a dot on him. And I see that the two OH groups that are needed to form the acetal could be these two, or it could be these two. So that's where the, uh, the two different acetals are going to be coming from. So one of the products here could be these two oxygens got together to form a five-membered ring. This third oxygen didn't do anything. So that would be one of the acetal products, right? I hope this gets easier to understand because if you're forming an acetal, you're just forming uh, a molecule that has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens, neither of which is an OH oxygen. So that's an acetal. That's a five-member ring, so that's good. And then we have these two oxygens could have gotten together to form the second acetal. So there's my uh, carbonyl carbon. It's going to be an acetal. What's an acetal? It has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens, neither of which is an OH oxygen. And this formed a six-member ring, looking like this. And now to form this second acetal, the OH group in the middle, he didn't do anything, right? So these would be the two possible acetal products that we would get from, from this. Okay, how'd that go? All right, let's try another one. Um, excuse me, Professor, how do you get to it for it to become two six-member rings? Because it's not two oh. six-member rings. It's a five-member ring and a six-member ring. Oh, exactly. Um, so what's your question? I don't understand. I don't get where you, like where you got, um, like how you separated them like that. All right, so see this guy here, this is, I'm gonna call this carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. This is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three. The OH group at carbon three didn't do anything to, uh, when this acetal was created, this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three. This guy, the OH group at carbon two didn't do anything. The recipe for the acetal is an aldehyde or ketone and two OH groups. So to form this guy, these were the two OH groups that got involved. To form this guy, these were the two OH groups that got involved. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay. Let's do another one. All right, so there's our aldehyde. And here is our other guy. Acid conditions. Okay, so we see it's the recipe for the acetal. We have an aldehyde or ketone and two OH groups. But we're trying to make the point that those two, uh, that there's a diversity of acetal formation. Those two OH groups can be on two different molecules or on, on the same molecule, or they can even be on the starting material. Okay, so why don't we take a few minutes and see if we can cook up the product here. It's, so draw the structure of the product. This is the recipe for the acetal, the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde or ketone, that's going to become the acetal carbon. The acetal carbon ha is bonded to two oxygens, neither of which is an OH oxygen. And where are those two other oxygens? Well, there's one and there's one. So what we need to do is we need to ring up this dot with these two oxygens, draw the structure of the problem.
So how are we coming along? Did you ring it up? Okay, there's the, there's what used to be the carbonyl carbon. That becomes the acetal carbon. That becomes a carbon that is bonded to two oxygen atoms, neither of which is an OH oxygen. All right, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to draw the structure of this product one step at a time. This oxygen, I'm going to put him in bold face. It could be this one, or it could be the other one. It doesn't matter. This oxygen is bonded to a benzene ring. So I'm just, draw, I'm just trying to draw the product here slowly, one step at a time, because this is kind of complicated. This second oxygen, that guy is this one. He's also bonded to that benzene ring but there's a CH2 group that intervenes. CH2, bad. Okay, and so there's the product, there's the product, there's the acetal. Yes? Oh, the chalk. Ooh. Okay, so now are you ready for a real hard problem? Oh, you know what? I'm I've been lazy here. I forgot to also mention, I'm focusing on the organic compound, but water is also a product, right? That's the inorganic compound. Okay, so now let's try something really hard. Okay, draw the structure of the product acetal here. Well, it's, the, it's definitely the recipe for the acetal because I need an aldehyde or a ketone and I need two OH groups and I need acid. There's my aldehyde or ketone and I have one, two, three, four. I have lots of OH groups here and I have acid. Let's see if we can draw the structure of the product. Okay, so here's, here's an example where the starting aldehyde or ketone, put a dot on the carbonyl carbon. He lives in a molecule that has a bunch of OH groups in it. And so we saw that the intramolecular reaction, where the nucleophile and the electrophile are on the same molecule, that is going to be faster than the inter molecular reaction. So I'm going to erase this guy up here. That's going to need a lot of real estate here. All right, so let's go on a little trip and let's see if this dot has an oxygen atom uh, that can form a five-membered ring or a six-membered ring. Those are thermodynamically stable. Here's our first oxygen atom. One, two, three. That's going to form a three-membered ring. That's no good. So this OH group is not going to do anything. Okay, now let's look at our let's look at this uh, OH group over here. 
One, two, three, four. If I hook up this oxygen to this dot, I'm going to get a four-membered ring. That's no good. Only five-membered rings and six-membered rings can form, uh, uh, can form to any appreciable extent. So he does nothing, he does nothing. How about this one? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah? So this oxygen closes in on this carbonyl carbon in a fast intramolecular reaction. So that's the first thing that is going to happen. Okay, so we get a five member ring cyclic hemiacetat. All right, so I'm going to try to draw the structure, just take it really slow, because I know this is pretty complicated. So I'm going to put that, the oxygen that attacked to form the five member ring, one, two, three, four, five, like that. And here's my dot. The dot has a methyl group on it. This is the hemiacetal. What's that? It has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens. One of them is an OH oxygen. So we have bold face oxygen. And then this carbon has a methyl group on him. Can't forget about him. And then the next carbon down has an OH group on it. That didn't do anything. We, uh, we saw that this oxygen is too close. And then the next carbon over has another OH group on it. That didn't do anything because we saw that that oxygen was too close as well. And then finally we get to the dot. Okay, so that's the hemiacetal and this molecule of um, um, ethanol hasn't done anything yet because the reaction in which the nucleophile and the electrophile are the same molecule is faster than the reaction in which the nucleophile and the electrophile are on different molecules. Okay, so now we can continue this. Of course, we still have acid present. Now it's time to draw the full acetal, which has a carbon atom bonded to two oxygens, neither of which is an OH oxygen. There's my bulk face oxygen. OH. OH. Pre existing methyl group. And now in the second intermolecular step, the, uh, the, uh, uh, this molecule of uh, ethanol came in to form the final acetal. So that would be, that would be the problem. Okay, so how'd that go? All right. So there's, a, there's this diversity of acetal formation where you're looking for two OH groups and you're looking for an aldehyde or ketone, but those functional groups can be deployed in three different molecules, two different molecules, or one different molecule, or, or one molecule. Okay. We said that acetals form only in acid. Why is that? Hydrates form in acid or in base. Hemiacetals form in uh, acid and in base, but acetals form only in acid. So let's talk for a little bit about why that is. Why acetals form in acid only. Okay, so just by way of a short little review, remember we said aldehyde or ketone plus aldehyde or ketone plus water, basic conditions, that would mean OH minus. Right, that leads to the hydrate. So a hydrate can form under basic conditions where water will be the nucleophile, but the reaction is catalyzed by hydroxide. We also talked about hemiacetal formation 
under basic conditions where the aldehyde or ketone is going to react with one mole of alcohol. But under basic conditions, the reaction is catalyzed by the conjugate base of the attacking alcohol. So this is how we would see hemiacetal represented under basic conditions. And we get a hemiacetal. Right, that's the hemiacetal form in base. Okay, but the acetal cannot form in base. Let's see why that is. All right, so we start out with our aldehyde or ketone. And we're going to add our first equivalent of alcohol. Remember, we need to shoot in two equivalents of alcohol to form the acetal. There's the first one. And so we saw in the, uh, we, we, we saw in the mechanism that this is going to form a hemiacetal. So there's the hemiacetal. And now when we shoot in our second equivalent of alcohol, when we shoot in our second equivalent of alcohol, the only thing that's going to happen is that that's a base, the Ka, uh, the, 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 the pK of an alcohol is about 17. That's a, so this is an alcohol, that's an alcohol. All that happens in base, instead of this guy going away, all that happens in base is that this negative charge picks off this proton and the oxygen atom gobbles up the electron pair that used to bond it to that proton. And so what we get is this plus ROH. And then the reaction just comes to a grinding halt. So the only thing that will happen in base is if we mix the heavy acetal with uh, more ROH and more RO minus, we just get this acid base reaction. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is greater than one. That's based on the uh, pKa's of all of the species that are involved, so that no acetal forms. All that happens is that you, we make the hemiacetal, and then the base is going to remove the proton from the uh, from the acetal uh, from the hemiacetal. Okay. All right, so now, let's finish up for today talking a little bit about the reversibility of acetal formation because, I, I, you know, uh, I'm lazy, I'm in a hurry, I'm nervous. Lots of times I forgot, forget to draw those equilibrium arrows. Today I tried to be careful about drawing those equilibrium arrows, but I want to uh, uh, spend a couple of minutes talking about the meaning of that equilibrium arrow. Acetal formation is reversible. What that means is if we start with an aldehyde or a ketone, we start with an aldehyde or a ketone, and react that with two equivalents of alcohol under acidic conditions, right? I'm not writing an equilibrium arrow here, and that's on purpose because I want to make the point that if we start with an aldehyde or ketone and two equivalents of alcohol. What I'm going to get is an acetal and water. So that's acetal formation. But acetal formation is reversible, meaning if we start with an acetal that was created somehow, if we start with an acetal, 
and add water to it and add a pinch of acid to it, what is going to happen is that the acetal is going to fall apart and revert to an aldehyde or ketone and two equivalents of alcohol, right? So I'm going to put a dot on the acetal card. When the acetal reacts with water, the acetal carbon reverts to a carbonyl carbon and the acetal oxygens fall off as OH oxygens. All right, so this is what is meant by, rever by a reversible reaction. Aldehyde or ketone plus two equivalents of alcohol makes an acetal and water. But acetal plus water, it, the, uh, the reaction is reversed. This reaction right here, this reaction right here, is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis of the acetal. So uh, when I create an acetal in the laboratory, I have to make sure that I have some way of taking water away or else the, uh, the reaction will reverse itself. And that can be done in various ways. I don't want to get into the experimental procedure here. Okay, so uh, as, uh, Acetal formation is reversible. So let's do some problems where we're focusing on hydrolysis of an acetal. So in some way, in some way, we've created this acetal, right? It's obviously an acetal. I see a carbon atom that is bonded to two oxygens, neither of which is an OH oxygen. I'm going to take this acetal and I'm going to react it with water and I'm going to add a pinch of acid, draw the structure of the product or products. What did we just talk about? Acetal formation is reversible. If you mix an, uh, an acetal with water and acid, the acetal carbon reverts to a carbonyl carbon and the acetal oxygens fall off as OH oxygens. So what would be the product of this, of this hydrolysis here? There's my acetal carbon. When the acetal reacts with water, the acetal carbon reverts to a carbonyl carbon. And my acetal oxygens fall off as OH oxygens. So that would be the product of the hydrolysis of this acetal, right? If I were to start with this plus this and add acid, I would go back to here. But if I start with this acetal and add water, that's the reverse reaction. Let's just try, uh, let's just try one more. Uh, something maybe a little bit more difficult. Maybe put a methyl group there, or hydrogen this time. Okay, is that an acetal? Oh my heavens, yes. Add water to him, add a pinch of acid, draw the structure of the product. So what happens when I mix an acetal with water? The acetal carbon reverts to a carbonyl carbon the acetal oxygens fall off as OH oxygens. So let's see if we can draw the structure of the product here. Okay, there's my acetal carbon. He's going to revert to a carbonyl carbon. Here are my acetal oxygens. They're going to fall off as OH oxygens. So uh, it's kind of ugly here, the way I'm drawing this, but that's okay. So that would be the structure of the, of the product here, where the acetal carbon has reverted to a carbonyl carbon. That's an an aldehyde in this case. 
and the two acetal oxygens have fallen off as OH oxygens. Okay. So on Friday's lecture, I'm going to talk about carbohydrates because this chemistry is very relevant to the chemistry of the carbohydrates. And someone who's interested in nutrition and dietetics wants to know about carbohydrates because that's where we get a lot of our energy from, I think. And so that's central to biochemistry. And it's also, also on Friday, I'm going to release a homework problem, right? Because uh, coronavirus or no coronavirus, we have to have a homework assignment. And so uh, we'll have a new homework and that will be, and we'll talk about the details of how to handle that. Any questions about anything before I sign off? No? Oh, let's see. Is the next exam on time? It is. Is it time for an exam soon? Sometime in April? Yeah, we have to do, we have to do that. And if the time interval is too, uh, too short, then we'll just have to push it back. But I'm looking to keep that on time. Okay, what else? Okay, I guess I'll see you next time.